Hi, welcome to this tutorial on sequences and recurrence relationships. So what is a sequence? Well a sequence is a set of terms, like I have here, where there's a common rule governing how we get from one term to the next term. Now I wonder if you can spot what this particular rule is. Well, what we're doing is to get any term, we double the previous term and then add 1. So for instance, if we have 6 and double it, we're going to have 12 and then add 1 gives 13. Likewise, if I've got 13 and double it, which would be 26 and add 1, I get 27. And doubling 27 is 54 and adding 1 is 55. So you can see how we can build up the sequence. Now, many authors use a particular type of notation for terms in sequences. And the common notation tends to be a U. And if we're referring to the first term, we often call it U1. That's a subscript there with the one down below the line, U1. And in this particular example, it's clearly 6. So the second term, U2, is 13, and so on third term 27 and the fourth term is 55. Now you will find some people write down the first term instead of u1 as u with a zero and the second term would be u1. So just be prepared for that but I find that a little confusing and pointless really so what I'm going to do is just stick to this particular terminology. Now what I want to show you is how we can find a formula for working out a particular term in the sequence. Now let's just suppose if we took this sequence, we took the nth term. Well that would be un. And what are we doing to any term to get the next term in the sequence? Well we're doubling it, so that would be twice un and we're adding 1 to that answer. And this gives us the next term in the sequence. And the next term in the sequence would be u with a subscript n plus 1. And this particular type of equation is called a recurrence relation. But to complete this, what you need to have is always the first term because you can't start your sequence unless you know the beginning term. So we'll say where u1 equals 6 and we also normally find that they'll say n is greater than or equal to 1. n is an integer greater than or equal to 1. Now the problem with recurrence relationships is that they're no good at finding a particular term further up the sequence. I mean, for instance, suppose I was trying to find the tenth term. If I was trying to find the tenth term, then I would have to set n equal to 9. Because if I wanted the tenth term, we would have u, 9 add 1, which would be u10, and that would equal 2 times un, n being 9, so that would be twice the ninth term plus 1. But unfortunately I can't find the tenth term straight away because I don't know the ninth term. I only know the fourth term. So as you can see this is a bit of a drawback because to get the ninth term I've got to know the eighth term and to get the eighth term I've got to know the seventh term and so on, the sixth term, the fifth term, all the way back to the fourth term. So it's quite a tedious method to work out what the tenth term would be. A better formula would be one that gives me the nth term directly, which is independent of the previous terms. But that's something that I'll show you in another video. But for the moment, let's work on recurrence relationships. So Here's a question that you're likely to see, and we can use this as an example. 
Write down the first four terms in the sequence and we've got where the n plus oneth term is equal to 3 times the nth term squared minus 9. Where n is greater than or equal to 1 and the first term in the sequence is 2. Now to get the second term in the sequence, because we already know the first term, we need to set n equal to 1. So when n equals 1, we're going to have u1 add 1, u2 in other words, is going to equal 3 times u1 squared, because n is 1. So that would be 3 times u1 squared, and then minus 9. But we know what u1 is. u1, the first term of the sequence, was 2. So we've got 3 times 2 squared, minus 9. And if you work that out, what you'll find you get is 3. So we now have the second term in the sequence. We need to work out u3. And to work out u3, we would need n to be equal to 2 here. So we'd say when n equals 2, we would have u3. And u3 would be equal to 3 times the previous term squared. Now the previous term was u2 because n was 2, u2 squared, and then minus 9. And filling this in, we're going to have 3 times u2, which was 3, so 3 times 3 squared, minus 9. And that gives us 18. And likewise, if we wanted the final term in the question, the fourth term, we would need to set n equal to 3. Well, you've most probably got the idea by now, I hope. And so u4 is going to be equal to 3 times the previous term, that was u3, all squared. So I'm not going to write that in as u3. just going to write that in as 18 squared minus 9. And if you work that one out, you get 963. So in answer to our question, write down the first four terms in the sequence, we've got basically that the sequence so far then has terms 2, that's the first term, the second term was this one here, u2, which was 3, third term was 18, and the fourth term was 963. So there's the answer to the question using the recurrence relationship up here. Well that brings us to the end of this particular tutorial but in other tutorials which you'll see on my website what I'll do is run through more examples that are on recurrence relationships.